Hi everyone, I'm back. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas or Hanukkah. I was on vacation with my family on a cruise. I got pretty sick the last couple of days. There was a lot of rough seas. I've been on many cruises before and sometimes I have problems and sometimes I don't. This time I had some major problems. <laughs> I could not actually get out of bed the last day of the cruise. I was that sick. I actually still have my C-bands on. I wore these during the cruise pretty much the entire time. They're supposed to be like an acupuncture thing that helps with nausea. So I had these on the entire time. I had some other medications that I would take, but anyway, I still feel like I'm moving. <laughs> so I have these on and I hope I don't sound off or look off because I definitely feel off, but I wanted to get start getting these videos out to you um, because I didn't pre-record any before I left because as a lot of you know, oh gosh, this is turning into a long intro, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, a lot of you know I've been doing remodeling at my house, the whole kitchen and the bathroom and there's just been a lot going on, a lot of noise, so I haven't been able to film, so now that I'm back, I want to start rolling out these best of 2019 videos. So I decided to do what I've done in previous years, which is to break up that the videos in two categories. Today's is going to be complexion, so I'm gonna cover concealer, primer, foundation, powders, bronzer slash contour products. Then I will do at least two more videos, one covering my favorite lip products, blushes, highlights, and then another one for eye products, eyeliners, mascaras, eyeshadow palettes. And then I'm thinking of possibly doing one for skincare and hair care. Haven't decided yet. There will also be a December favorites video. So this is not taking the place of my December favorites. I'm gonna stop talking and we'll jump right into primers. So there are three primers that I use consistently. One of them I haven't used for a while and I cannot seem to find the bottle anywhere around here. And I know I have at least one bottle of it. It's the Hourglass Veil Primer. That's a primer that I've raved about for years now. I definitely think it's one of the best for someone with oily skin, oily to combination. My skin is still super oily, but I've been leaning towards primers that are more smoothing, that do a little bit more. The, the Hourglass does offer some smoothing, but I really love this one from Strivectin. It's the Anti-Wrinkle Line Blur Factor Instant Wrinkle Blurring Primer. If you watch my videos consistently, I have spoken about this one probably more so than any other in the last few months. And I just love how this does exactly what it says it's going to do. It, blurs my pores, it blurs the fine lines, it keeps my makeup on longer, my makeup goes on smoother. It's not the best for mattifying. I wouldn't say that it keeps my skin shine free, but I do like the way my skin looks when I use this. A, a less expensive option if you are looking for a more mattifying primer. This one I discovered recently and I just put it in a dupes video as well. I put this as a dupe for the Lancome Prep and Matte Primer. This is the True Blend, again, it's from CoverGirl, mattifying skin primer with kaolin clay. This is another great mattifier and it's a lot less expensive than both the Hourglass and the Lancome. So if you have oily skin, maybe you don't have issues with large pores or fine lines, lucky you, but you do have issues with oiliness, then I would highly recommend this one or the Hourglass. But if blurring pores and those fine lines is what you're looking to do, then I highly recommend the Strivectin. Okay, so that was face primers, and now let's move on to eye primers. I have three of those as well. This first favorite is from the drugstore. It is the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. I've talked about this a lot, a lot, a lot over the years as well. This is my go-to drugstore eyeshadow primer. It's just really, really good. It does what you want an eyeshadow primer to do. It helps your eyeshadow stay on longer. If you have oily, oily lids like I do, it keeps the eyeshadow from pooling in the lid, on the lid after a few hours. So this is a great one. I also still love my NARS Pro Prime. I have it in both the clear white shade and then also the medium. So if I'm doing a more intense smoky eye, I like to use the medium in the NARS Pro Prime as my base and also it helps to make those smokier, smokier colors blend nicer because a lot of times when you're using a matte eyeshadow, especially a dark matte eyeshadow, they can be a little bit more difficult to blend. So using a primer like this underneath 
makes the blendability and the pigmentation that much better. And then the one I have been using the most consistently since I purchased it, I think I got it in early October. Yeah, I bought it when I was in Atlanta in early October. And this is the P. Louise eyeshadow base and I am in shade Rumor 02. I picked this up at the Morphe Boutique and I bought this because so many of you, so many of my viewers had been recommending it to me for so long. So when I saw it on display at the Morphe store, I was excited because I don't believe it's sold anywhere else in the US. So I thought I'm gonna give it a try, see if the hype is real and it's pretty darn good. As I said, I've been using it every single day since I got it. I love the consistency. A little bit goes a really, really, really long way. So you just use the tiniest bit. And I love how it neutralizes the skin on my lid. Sometimes when you have an eyeshadow primer that does that, that neutralizes, that's tinted, it can be a little thick and it can cause the eyeshadow to not go on as nicely as you want it to. So this is very smoothing to the look of my lids. I love how it neutralizes the pigmentation because I have a lot of bluish purplish color going on the lid and it just keeps my eyeshadow from moving at all. When I use this eyeshadow primer, no joke, my eye makeup looks perfect from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m., which is pretty much the latest that I ever stay up. Okay, moving on to foundations and concealers, starting with foundations. This was a really, really tough category for me, as I'm sure it is for a lot of YouTubers that, we're doing, that are doing these videos, because we try so many. There are so many that are released throughout the year of the ones that I've chosen, only one is really new, released this year. Another one has was reformulated. So let's get to it. This is the Chanel Ultra Latent Blurring Smooth Effect Foundation. So as I was saying, this is actually a reformulation of another very popular, beloved Chanel foundation formula that I cannot think of the name of right now, I will put it on the screen. I just took this one on the cruise with me. It's my go-to everyday foundation lately. It's travel friendly, it has a little squeeze tube. It just makes your skin look perfected, but not overdone. I have heard from a lot of other viewers and other YouTubers that also have more mature skin in their 40s and 50s that even have drier skin, have way drier skin than I do, and they still really love this product. Well, I don't have dry skin at all, but what I'm trying to say is that I think a lot of different skin types will enjoy this foundation. It's great for every day. Another foundation that I've reached for a lot this past year that I think would be a great choice for all ages and all skin types, except for the most oily, this is the Wander Nude Illusion Liquid Foundation. This is another great everyday, your skin but better, medium coverage foundation. I wish it came in more shades. Uh, some people don't like the large doe foot applicator that this has, but I don't mind it. I just sort of swipe it on and then either use a brush or a sponge and blend it out and I get just beautiful natural looking coverage. So this is the doe foot. And I'm in the shade light medium. I will put my shades in the description as well as easy access links to all these products as I usually do. All right, next up are my three holy grail foundations. The ones that I talk about over and over and over that I use over and over and over that have been staples in my makeup collection for many years now. In fact, this one, Studio Fix Fluid, I've been wearing it for at least 15 years. I don't even know how long it's been out, but however long it's been out, I've been using it. And people always ask me what shade I am in this. And it's a hard question for me to answer because I have so many bottles that I sort of customize, I custom blend, my foundation because honestly, none of them is quite right. If I had to give the closest shade, I would say NC30, NC25 or NC30. But when I use NC30 or 25, I will typically mix in a little NW20. Or if I've been self tanning, I will go as dark as NC40. 
NC37. So I'm a big mixer when it comes to this foundation, but this is my go-to if I am going out for a formal event, a special occasion of any kind, this is the foundation that I will reach for. It just never fails me. It makes my skin look flawless. It stays on for hours. And since I have a Mac Pro card, it's pretty affordable for me because I get 40% off. So this has been my holy grail forever and ever. I can't see it changing. My other holy grails are the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte. This is the foundation I reach for the most in the summertime because I do feel like this controls oil better than any of the others I'm going to show you today. It makes my skin, it keeps my skin matte, but it doesn't look like a dull matte. It just makes my skin look so just pretty and youthful and covered, but still natural. My skin can breathe. It's photo friendly. It's travel friendly. It has a pump. I think it smells really good. So this is another holy grail of mine. And believe it or not, the only foundation that was released this year that made it to my best of 2019 list is I think going to be a little controversial because this is either a love it or hate it product. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Foundation. When I first purchased and tried this foundation, I thought, oh my goodness, I might have found something to take over my Studio Fix Fluid. This might be my new favorite of all time. But it was not to be. I still really, really like this foundation. It's the one I have on right now. But there's just something about it that to me is not as good as the Studio Fix Fluid. It stays on a really long time. And I think the difference is that the Studio Fix keeps me matter longer and it looks a little bit more natural. It's hard to say natural when you're talking about full coverage foundations that give you that real flawless look. So use the shade six. I do feel like the shade selection could be vastly improved. If I remember correctly, they all pulled pretty yellow. And even though they're, she's supposed to offer neutral, cool, and warm, this neutral, this six neutral is super yellow. I don't mind it because I do have a lot of red in my skin, so I like to tone that down with a yellow, but a neutral should not be this yellow. So here I am giving you all the negatives about this foundation, but yet it's in my favorites. Because for me, it just works. For my skin type, for my needs, for my skin color, it's great. And it's one that I reach for a lot. And I do find that my skin does look better when I use this consistently. This foundation has a lot of skincare ingredients in it. I'll put them on the screen because I can't remember them all right now. And I know a lot of people don't like when you're a YouTuber is just reading from their phone, but I'll put a little bit on the screen of the benefits of this foundation. And I remember when I first got it and I was reviewing it, I said, I'll update you and let you know if it really does have, you know, do what it says it does, like increase hydration and make my skin just look better overall. And I honestly, I think it does. I, I do switch around, so it's hard to say for sure. I, I have never worn a foundation for like, say two weeks in a row without switching here or there. So. I, I do feel like I've noticed since I purchased this that when I wear this consistently, and for me consistent, consistently is like three or four days in a row, I feel like my skin looks better. My skin improves. So I really should do a test and just wear one foundation for like a month straight. I don't know if I could do it though, but it would be interesting. All right, for concealers, my four go-tos. To our drugstore, to our not, there are a lot of concealers on the market that I think are great, that I've spoken about in videos this past year. The Kevin O'Quan Etherealist, the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion, I really like those. The NARS Radiant Creamy, I still use Tarte Shape Tape on occasion. But these are honestly the four that I've reached for the most. One of them being the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Under Eye Concealer. I have a whole video dedicated to this because this is the first drugstore concealer I ever finished up. I rarely finish up any product, let alone a concealer, because I'm always bouncing around trying to find something better. But I used this whole tube. I purchased it again, finished that one up, purchased it again. This is 
so good. My other favorite drugstore concealer is this one from Milani. It's the Conceal and Perfect. I would say, hmm, of the two, which one do I like better? Hmm, that's really difficult. I think they're both really excellent. I think I reach for this one more because I feel like it gives a little bit more coverage and lasts a little bit longer. My other two favorites are the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I think this one is excellent for more mature skin if you have a lot of fine lines, if you find that your concealer tends to cake up. This one is really nice. I just hate the packaging of it. It's got this sponge applicator, which in theory makes sense because it gets right in here on this angle really nicely. Um, but as you can see, it just gets super messy. It takes a lot of clicks to get it to start coming out. And then when you do, when it does start flowing, you have to be very careful of how many clicks you use. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just weird and don't know how to use this product properly, but I've purchased it a, a couple times now because I just really love um, how it makes my under eyes look. And again, it has other skincare properties within it that you're not going to find in these. So anytime I can kind of get a two for one or a three for one where I'm getting skincare benefits, skin improvement, you know, if something's going to help with hydration under the eyes, with the appearance of fine lines, plumpness, dark circles, if that's built into the concealer, I'm willing to pay more for that. And then the last concealer, this might be a surprise to some people because I don't know how much I've actually talked about this. This would be in one of those videos where I, that I've done before where I talk about products that I use a lot but don't often show in videos and I'm not sure why. This is the MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer. This shade is, ooh, NW25. It's got a little bit of a peachy tone to it. So it corrects and conceals at the same time. I do have a couple correctors that I like. I didn't put them in the video because I don't reach for them all that often. There's a new Charlotte Tilbury corrector that um, I do like when I remember to use it, but I often just, just wanna use one concealer and just, you know, put it on, pat it in, don't wanna take the time to apply two steps. But, and that's one of the things I really like about this concealer, particularly this shade is because it does have a little bit of a peachy undertone, which helps to neutralize those purple and blue dark circles we have here and here. Well, most of us have, hence why we're using concealer. But it gives a nice brightening effect. It lasts all day. It's very underrated in my opinion. All right, moving on to setting powders. I have four favorites, sort of for four different skin types. I can use them all. I like them all, obviously, but I think if I'm gonna be recommending them, I'm gonna tell you specifically who I would recommend them for. Starting with the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. This is so good for those of you that have drier skin, more mature skin, if you feel like maybe you get oily, oily in the T-zone, but you don't like the idea of powder, you feel like it's aging. This is a hydrating loose powder. You can set your makeup with it. It's going to help your makeup to stay on longer. It's gonna give you more of a flawless airbrushed look. It will help to sort of diffuse the look of the fine lines. This is a beautiful powder and it's super, super fine. Yes, it's expensive. Expensive, but again, it's got those skincare benefits in it. It really is going to help improve the hydration in your skin. That's what hyaluronic acid does. It helps to keep the moisture in your skin. It's a moisture binder. This powder does come in several different shades now. There's an original translucent, but now there are some tinted shades that are fantastic. I recommend this to a lot of my friends and family members. Two powders that I use more often than the By Terry, simply because I do have such oily skin. They are the Nakia Joy Loose Powder. This is amazing for oily skin. I don't know where the cap is to mine, and that frustrates me. I looked all around my house for it, cannot find the cap, because I'll take caps of different powders and then I'll pour the powder into the cap, and that's how I apply it. So I don't know what happened to this 
stinking cat, but this Nikia Joy powder is amazing if you have combo to oily skin. It really does give your skin a flawless airbrush effect, which you're gonna hear me say about all of these powders because that's what I personally look for in a powder. I want it to take down the shine. I want it to diffuse the look of pores, fine lines. Give me that, once again, <laughs> airbrushed look. We could play a drinking game. How many times does Risa say airbrushed in one video <laughs> or poreless? Um, many times because I'm talking about the best of the best, right? So you should look airbrushed and poreless if you're using such awesome products. My next favorite powder isn't as oil controlling as the Nikia Joy, but it does do a decent job with controlling oil. And this one would be better suited for someone with you know, combination to slightly dry, normal, slightly oily. I would say the By Terry, excellent for combination dry, mature skin. The Nikia Joy, best for combination to oily. The Huda Beauty baking powder, good for a variety of skin types, except for the most dry and the most oily. This texture I think is beautiful. Um, I'm gonna try not to say the words airbrushed and poreless again, but I just did. Uh, the only thing about this powder, and I say this every time I talk about it, is that it does have a very potent fragrance to it. I don't mind it, I actually kind of like it, but I know for some people, fragrance is a no-go and an automatic turn-off, so I wouldn't recommend trying this if you have an issue with fragrance, but I love this powder, and I think it works beautiful under the eyes as well. You do have to be careful, especially with more mature under eyes, you don't wanna use too much, but for the under eyes, but um, I think overall it's a great product and I have repurchased this at least once this year. And an excellent drugstore loose powder option that I only recently discovered, although it's been around forever, is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. I had seen quite a few other YouTubers rave about this, so one day I was in Target and I thought, why not give it a try? And it's a really nice, loose powder. I don't love it as much as these others, but I think it's really good. And it really does a nice job for setting the under eye area, for setting your concealer. I purchased the Fair Light because that's what I wanted it for, is to set my under eyes. And it does a really, really good job with that. And I know so many people love this. I keep it here at my makeup vanity filming area whenever I need to touch up. Although, I feel like I need to touch up right now, but every time I don't powder in a video, I'll always get several comments from people that say, Risa, how does your skin look so dewy and fresh? And I'm sitting here thinking, it's just oil. I need to blot. So I do keep this Fit Me powder right here by my side for quick filming touch-ups. Now, some of you might be wondering, what about pressed powders? Do you use any pressed powders? Yes, but I only own and use two. One being the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, and the other being my Holy Grail MAC Blot Powder. I use the shade Medium Dark because I find these run super, super light. I've been using this for years and years. I have them all over my home, in my car, in every handbag. I cannot be without this powder. I could use this powder 20 times during the day and it will never cake up. It never messes with my foundation. It, I just cannot quit it. It's gonna be forever and ever a staple in my handbag. And finally, to finish off this best of 2019 complexion products video, I have got a couple of products that I use for contouring and a couple that I use for bronzing. For contouring, my favorites are the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand in fair medium. I just put this right underneath my cheeks, a little bit on my forehead. I swipe it down the sides of my nose and then I blend it in. Same thing with this Fenty Matchstick and Mocha. I just so I put it under my cheeks, a little bit here, down the sides of my nose, and then I will use my, I should have brought it, um, I'll put it on the screen, my, I think it's called the Heavenly Complexion Brush from It Cosmetics, I will use that to blend it out. I've tried several other contour products throughout the last year, throughout the last several years, and these are just the two that I find are the easiest to use and give me the most natural look. I've also been loving the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow in the dark palette. 
I've raved about the light palette for years. I think it's a great contour slash bronzer slash highlight for someone with lighter skin. And then a couple years after that was released, Charlotte came out with the darker version. And I saw someone on Instagram using this for her blush, using this shade for her blush. And she was had fair skin like I did. And I just thought it looked great. And the reason why I had never tried it before is I just thought, well, I have fair to light skin. Why would I buy medium to dark? But once I tried this, I was hooked. I used it as a bronzer today. I do use this shade for blush once in a while, especially in the summertime when I want that kind of minimalist bronze goddessy type of look. This can definitely give you that. You can use both of these as eyeshadows. And this duo is going to last you a long time. My fair light combo palette I've had for several years now and I've only just recently started to hit pan on it. All right, that'll do it for my best of 2019 complexion video. I've shown you all of my favorite foundations, powders, concealers, primers, bronzers. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next videos in the series, which will be my favorite eyeshadow palettes, mascaras, and then my favorite lip products and blushes and highlighters. You don't wanna miss it. There's lots of good stuff to show you. And be sure to check me out on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook under the same username, Risa Does Makeup. That'll do it. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon.